Good day, Israelites. My name is Brother Greg Qualls. Welcome back to Talking with Israel. Come to the feasts. This is not an invitation, but a command. These are the appointed times of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall proclaim at the times appointed for them. In the first of the month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at twilight is the Lord's Passover. This is God speaking to us out of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 4, telling us when and how to meet him and worship him. The Lord already knows that most of the people on earth will not hear his voice. They will not read his word and they will not do what they should do, what is best for them. No, today in your body is all that matters. What do I want today? And that's every day. Perhaps once in a while this person may think about the future, but the person thinks that'll take care of itself. Hardly ever do they think about their spirit, which is essentially that person. But it's totally ignored. That spirit in you, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And because of that breath, man became a living soul. We are but flesh made of dust. The word tells us that when you die, your body returns to the ground from which it came and the breath or spirit or soul that God gave you returns to him. When he receives your soul, your spirit, will there be any truth in it? Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 And God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Everything that God created was good. That <laughs> included Adam and Eve. Do you know what made them bad? Their bodies. Lust of the eyes, the tree was a delight. Lust of the flesh, the tree was good for food. And the pride of life, the tree was desirable to make one wise. What they wanted on that day, that one day, when they were morally innocent, was against what God had already told them, but that body, it wants what it wants. And as apples beget apples and dogs beget dogs, humans beget humans. We are not good because they were not good. And that's why there is a book. You know, everybody's heard the story of Adam and Eve, and they do call it a story from the Bible, but the Bible is not a storybook. It is the book of life for us, given by an almighty God to ensure that his people had the truth and would choose to live it. You who are listening have made that choice, and I thank God for you, for every one of you. You're accomplishing your goal of reaching that first resurrection. For 55 years, I woke up and I thought about me. I went to Sunday church and the pastor spoke and I read a couple of scriptures that he gave me and everything he said and everything in the book showed me that I was all right in the sight of God. I was, and I suspect that most of you are, totally ignoring your spirit. What our pastor should have told us is when he returns, an angel will shout, Come, assemble for the great supper of God, in order that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of commanders and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free men and slave, small and great. Revelation chapter 19, verses 17 and 18. 
These dead people that all the birds will eat the flesh of are those people who are ignoring their spirit. Feed your spirit. <laughs> we are but flesh. The thing that makes you do what you do and behave the way you behave and think the way you think, that is what you need to have control over. Our spirit. And this can only come about by changing the way we think. We think as Adam thought. Now we have to change our thinking back to the way that God created us to think. That is why his appointed times are very, very important to us. Tell your spirit to tell your bodies that they will meet our father at the times appointed for his feasts. In Leviticus chapter 23, God starts to talk about his appointed times with the Sabbath. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall not do any work. This is God talking. This is not a religion. This is not a denomination. This is his truth. Why do you go to church? For some it's social, for some it's a duty. But church exists so that one can find the truth and thereby sanctify oneself by living the truth. The only church that I know of in this country that is teaching the word as it is written are led by the Hebrews the chosen of God to deliver his message. Continuing with the feast in the first month, on the 14th day of the month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. Passover takes place in late March or early April. It is the first month to God. This is our new year, the new year of those who worship and serve him. Because in Exodus chapter 20, upon freeing us from slavery, God made the third month the first month. And so it is. This reminds me, we don't even know the date and the time we are in. According to God, this world has 354 days each year. The month follows the moon. And when there is a sliver of a moon following the new moon, a new month begins. We Hebrews use the same method today to arrive at his feasts at the appointed times. The Israel of God, the church that I attend, has the feast calendar at their website, theisraelofgod.com backslash feast backslash. On Passover, we partake of the bread and the wine and not the lamb, because Jesus is our lamb. We do as he did. We do not do what the Edomites do. They eat lamb and they eat bitter roots. Then on the 15th day of the same month, there is the feast of unleavened bread to the Lord. For seven days, you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work, meaning you may cook, but no labor. Now we are in captivity and we are no longer able to present as a congregation offerings by fire to God. And of course, we're no longer an agrarian people, so we don't raise grain nor recognize a harvest, but we dedicate our thoughts and our prayers and our praise to him during those seven days. After the Sabbath, the conclusion of those seven days, we count seven Sabbaths to the next feast of Pentecost, which occurs in late May or early June. This year it will be on the 27th of May, where we are to have a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work. On this day, we acknowledge the first fruit, Jesus. He is the first fruit of the resurrection to come. In the seventh month, on the first of the month, September 15th this year, 
you shall have a rest, a reminder by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work, but you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. Again, worship and praise him in lieu of causing fire damage. <laughs> On exactly the tenth day of the seventh month is the Day of Atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you, and you shall humble your souls on the ninth of the month at evening. From evening to evening, you shall keep your Sabbath. On this day where God commands that we fast, we have no bread or water or anything for this body to make atonement on our behalf before the Lord our God. On the 15th day of the seventh month is the Feast of Booths, or the Feast of Tabernacles. On the first day is a holy convocation and no laborious work. This feast is so that our generations may know, as God says, that he had the sons of Israel live in booths when he brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God on the eighth day day you shall have a holy convocation and present an offering by fire to the Lord. It is an assembly and you shall do no laborious work. <laughs> Only God can turn a seven day feast into an eight day feast. He does that by the way and there is a, a lot of the gospel in the feasts. But he does that to talk about our seven days of humanity here on earth and the eighth day when he will return. And we'll talk about that one of these days. We'll talk about that soon. Now I've skimped through Leviticus chapter 23, but please read it. It also tells us how the world was supposed to be treated so that we could have enjoyed all of its bounty man. I hope you've acquired some wisdom here today. I, I am praying that someone's mind was changed and a decision was made to leave that Sunday church and to find a teacher sent by God to teach his word to strengthen and fortify their inner person, their spirit, and their soul. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the innermost parts of his being. And I pray he will find nothing but truth there. <sighs> Incline your ear and hear the word of the wise and apply your mind to my knowledge. For it will be pleasant if you keep them within you that they may be ready on your lips, so that your trust may be in the Lord. I have taught you, even you. Have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge to make you know the certainty of the words of truth that you may correctly answer to him who sent you? Thanks for listening. May the eternal God make thy path straight. And the Lord be with thee and protect thee from all evil. And grant unto thee grace, mercy, and favor before those who see thee. And may none of the children of men have power over thee to harm thee. God bless you.